Hello, my name is Stephanie Raymer, and I am pleased to present findings from our recent paper published in the American Journal of Public Health titled Breastfeeding by Disability Status in the United States, Pregnancy Risk Assessment Monitoring 2018 to 2020. Today, I will be discussing findings from the Pregnancy Risk Assessment Monitoring System, which I'll refer to as PRAMS throughout this presentation. I'll be talking about the findings from the Supplemental Questionnaire on Disability, starting with some background, detailing the methods, and finally, moving into the results and conclusion. Although women with disability are as likely to experience pregnancy as women without disability, previous research has suggested women with disability breastfeed at lower rates than those without disability and are unlikely to receive information concerning how their disability could affect breastfeeding. Additionally, previous research has suggested that receipt of some form of breastfeeding education by healthcare providers is associated with higher breastfeeding rates among the general population. However, data are limited on the breastfeeding experiences among women with disability. Qualitative studies have demonstrated women with disability report challenges, including a lack of support, limited information on disability-related health considerations, milk supply and latch problems, and challenges communicating lactation difficulties with lactation consultants. However, women with disability have also reported facilitators to breastfeeding, including peer support, positive support from healthcare providers, use of a breast pump, and physical support to breastfeed. Our objective of this analysis was to describe breastfeeding initiation and breastfeeding at one, two, and three months, and information sources on breastfeeding among women with a recent live birth by disability status. We analyzed 2018 to 2020 data from PRAMS, a population-based site-specific surveillance system, which collects self-reported data on maternal behaviors and experiences before, during, and shortly after pregnancy. Women with a recent live birth are randomly sampled from the birth certificate files and contacted two to six months after delivery to participate. PRAMS is conducted by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, in collaboration with site health departments, Data are collected using both mail and telephone survey uh, methods. The PRAMS survey includes a core set of questions on all site surveys, and to address emerging topics, sites periodically add supplements to their survey. The PRAMS disability supplement was made available to sites in 2018 to address the gap in availability of population-based data on disability among women with a recent live birth. To measure disability, respondents were asked the Washington Group short set of questions on disability, a validated instrument with six questions on functional ability that measure difficulty with seeing, hearing, walking or climbing stairs, remembering or concentrating, self-care, and communicating. Respondents selected from the following responses, no difficulty, some difficulty, a lot of difficulty, or I cannot do this at all. As recommended by the Washington Group, we define disability as reporting a lot of difficulty or I cannot do this at all to any of the six questions. We considered respondents as having initiated breastfeeding if they responded yes to did you ever breastfeed or pump breast milk to feed your new baby, even for a short period of time. To measure any breastfeeding at one, two, and three months, respondents who had initiated breastfeeding were asked, are you currently breastfeeding or feeding pumped milk to your new baby? If respondents were no longer breastfeeding at the time of the survey, then they were asked, how many weeks did you breastfeed or pump milk to feed your baby? We created separate dichotomous yes-no variables for breastfeeding initiation, breastfeeding at one month, breastfeeding at two months, and breastfeeding at three months. For all analyses examining breastfeeding at three months, we restricted the sample to those who completed the PRAMS survey three or more months after delivery. To assess who received information from each source of breastfeeding information, respondents were asked, or after your new baby was born, did you receive information about breastfeeding from any of the following sources? We created two categories for sources of information. Healthcare provider or support professional was defined as responding yes to my doctor, baby's doctor, or nurse, midwife, or doula. Those that responded yes to breastfeeding or lactation specialist were defined as responding yes to this response option. We analyzed October 1st, 2018 to December 31st, 2020 data from 24 PRAMS sites that implemented the PRAMS Disability Supplement and met CDC's 50% response rate for at least one study year. The map on the slide shows these sites in blue. We estimated the prevalence of any disability and type of disability overall and by covariates. We selected covariates a priori that were found to be associated with disability or breastfeeding. 
We examined the following respondents' characteristics using birth certificate data available in the PRAMS dataset. Age, race or ethnicity, education level, parity, delivery method, participation in WIC prenatally, and gestational age at delivery. We calculated the unadjusted and adjusted prevalence estimates for each breastfeeding outcome and source of information using average marginal predictions approach to logistic regression models and generated prevalence ratios with their associated 95% confidence intervals to examine associations between disability status and each breastfeeding outcome and source of information. Each multivariable logistic regression model was adjusted for race or ethnicity, age, education level, parity, delivery method, WIC participation, gestational age, and PRAM site. Data are weighted for sampling design, non-coverage, and non-response. In our analysis, among respondents who participated in PRAMS in sites from 2018 to 2020 where the disability supplement was implemented, 6% reported any disability. In adjusted analyses, prevalence of disability initiation did not differ by disability status. After adjustment for covariates, breastfeeding at one month also did not differ by disability status. However, prevalence of breastfeeding remained lower at two months by four percentage points among respondents with disability compared with respondents without disability. Prevalence of breastfeeding also remained lower at three months by five percentage points among respondents with disability compared with respondents without disability. Respondents with disability were less likely to receive information from healthcare providers or support professionals. Prevalence of receiving information from breastfeeding or lactation specialists among respondents with disability was similar to prevalence among respondents without disability. In adjusted analyses, regardless of disability, respondents who received breastfeeding information from only breastfeeding or lactation specialists were more likely to initiate breastfeeding and continue breastfeeding at one, two, and three months than respondents who had not received breastfeeding information from either source. In conclusion, there is very limited information on how disability affects breastfeeding, and our analyses provide additional insight into how disability might affect breastfeeding. Respondents with disability generally reported a lower prevalence of breastfeeding at two and three months than respondents without disability and were less likely to receive information from healthcare providers. Respondents with disability had a similar prevalence of receiving information from a breastfeeding or lactation specialist as respondents without disability. Strategies to ensure women with disability receive breastfeeding support, including information from healthcare providers and breastfeeding or lactation specialists, can improve breastfeeding outcomes. Thank you for listening. You can find the full paper on the AJPH website.